In this video, I'm going to plot the voltage along the line in blue, and I'm also going to separate out the incident voltage in green and the reflected voltage in red. So here I have a Gaussian pulse that's incident on the line. Uh, the green line is just going to track that incident pulse, and the blue one is the sum of all the voltages on there, all the incident and reflected. This pulse, the blue line, is going into an open. Now since the ZL is infinite and the Z0 is finite, uh, the reflection is going to be uh, 1, normalized 1. Let's watch the reflection again. We have 1 volt incident on the open and 1 volt reflected. The leading edge of the reflection is going to sum with the lagging edge of the incident wave, so at the boundary we get 2 volts. So the blue voltage along the line is the sum of the incident and the reflected waves. Now let's see what happens when we send a pulse down to the short. So again, we have an incident pulse in green, and we have the sum of all the voltages, the incident reflected in blue, traveling down the line. It's a short. ZL is zero, so we get a minus one reflection on here. And then let's watch how the energy sums. So we have a minus one reflection, and we can see that the uh, voltage along the line actually gets zeroed out. So let's see that one more time. The leading edge of the negative reflected wave is going to sum with the lagging edge of the positive incident wave. So around the boundary we get zero volts. Now we're going to send a digital signal down the line. And instead of an open or a short, we'll be using a 37 ohm load and a 74 ohm transmission line. We expect to see a negative one third volt reflection. Since our pulses are periodic, we can see more instances of the green incident and the red reflected waves summing together to make the actual voltages on the line in blue. Where the green incident wave is zero volts and the red reflected wave is minus a third volt, the blue voltage sum is minus a third on the line. Where the green incident wave is one volt and the red reflected wave is minus a third volt, the blue voltage sum waveform is two thirds of a volt. Where the green incident wave is 1 volt and the red reflected wave is 0 volts, the blue voltage sum is 1 volt. And where both the incident and reflected voltage waves are 0, the sum of the voltages is, of course, 0. So we can see that the Ripley waveform that's on the blue line is a simple voltage sum of all the incident and reflected waves. In the simulation so far, the only reflection has been at the load. However, things get more complicated when there's a mismatch at the source to the left. This mismatch is only present on the blue voltage sum line. The green incident waveform is only the first driven incident field, and the red reflected wave is the first bounce. This is a voltage simulation of the string standing wave generator seen in another video in this series. The voltage builds in a single peak half of a sine wave starts to develop. As I zoom out, you can see how a small voltage wave can build up to become a large voltage wave in a resonant circuit. Here we have the same phenomena, but this line is one wavelength long. So you can start to see how the voltages are reflecting and building on each other because the voltage source on the left is not a perfect fixed point, our center null moves around a little bit. As the voltage wave builds, the small voltage source looks more like a fixed point and the center will stabilize. We can see when our transmission line is one wavelength long, the voltage sum shows two peaks and a full sine wave vibrating just like our string did. We started at 4.8 Hz to make a half wavelength. As we increased our frequency to 9.6 Hz here, the wavelengths get shorter, so you can fit more of a wavelength on the same transmission line. Now we'll increase the frequency to 12 Hz, so we can support one and a quarter wavelengths on the same length line. With the half and full wavelength lines, there's a peak 90 degrees from the edge in both cases. From that point, the incident wave travels 90 degrees and hits the short, which flips the polarity. The wave is now at 270 degrees. It travels another 90 degrees to the center to make 360 and is ready to add constructively with the next pulse.
As we saw with the string video, at 0.75 and 1.25 wavelengths, these pulses instead cancel destructively along the line and no strong peaks develop. 